from the line, as you mentioned, Jim, four of 11 from the field with five turnovers. Yeah, that's the thing, and he probably had about seven turnovers, but they put him on the line instead. But I'll tell you something, you, you look at the field goal percentage there, the Warriors can do a little bit better job. They gave up some easy ones, usually off the, uh, the turnovers, but they forced 12 turnovers from Philadelphia right now. I, I really think there's been no rhythm to this game. So I think this is anybody's basketball game, but it's the team that's gonna make the fewest mistakes is gonna come and prevail. I think for the Warriors too, when you think about the steals and you think about 13 assists on 19 made field goals, you're doing a lot of good things. But at some point, managing the lead and also protecting the basketball against Iguodala and Iverson, because they feed off your mistakes and score the other way. And we know about Iverson, of course, in December at Milwaukee at Utah, 54-51, he became the seventh player in history to score in back-to-back -back 50 or more points. And, you know, three of those other players were Warriors. Rick Barry, Chamberlain, Antoine and Antoine Jameson. Kind of interesting, elite group. Iverson, two 50-point games, and then the 60-pointer against Orlando this year. Which is his career high. Iguodala missing, and Murphy with the rebound. So Derek Fisher, Jason Richardson, Dunleavy, Foyle, and Troy Murphy. Weber, Dallenbear, Iguodala, Kyle Korver, and Iverson for Philadelphia. So what's at stake for the Sixers? A half came out of the eighth spot. Iverson knocking that away. Dunleavy. We called for the foul as he dove on the floor and undercut Dallenbear. A half came out of the A spot for Philly, but only two games out of the Atlantic Division lead, which would be the third seed. Weber and Iverson. Iguodala didn't want the top of the key jumper. Three second violation is. D'Alembert was parked there waiting for somebody to shoot the ball. Well, good smothering defense. Jim O'Brien got his first chance at a head coaching job when Rick Pitino was let go in Boston and earned his stripes. He's uh, a lot more user friendly than he used to be. He communicates. He says to Chris Weber, you know, you immediately you got to tell me what you're feeling if something's gone wrong when he only played 28 minutes in that one point victory at Atlanta. I guess Weber got a little upset. But he, well, only he, played, sat, he only played, uh, what? He sat so much in the second half. Right? Yeah, he sat 12 minutes. Right. Yeah, he sat 12 minutes, a little more as well. He went to the bench and only came back with three minutes left in the game in the fourth quarter and said, I, I can't help if I'm not on the floor. And Jim O'Brien said, look, we just barely know each other. You got a problem, come talk to me. Richardson, the jumper over the backboard. So Jason, three of nine, eight points, but four assists, and he's been the focus of the Sixer defense. Weber battling that out. Weber's three of eight shooting. Fisher launching and hitting. Derek Fisher, who was two of 10 in New York, is three of three with nine points and six rebounds at the point guard spot. Kind of picking his spots, isn't he? Playing through the flu. It didn't come shoot around today under the weather. Never with that hook. Rebound to Foil. Outlet to Murphy. He just found somebody in blue. And then Levy draws the foul. But just, I love O'Donnell's outlets tonight. So do I. Because even if the play's not pretty on the finisher, it got Dunleavy to the line just by getting the ball out. Well, there's no question that the transition defense is non-existent with Philadelphia tonight. You push the ball ahead, and you get these kinds of opportunities. And once again, Mike Dunleavy gets to the free throw line, and this will be fifth and sixth free throws attempted, which is nice for him. Our Toyota trivia, Iverson has led the Sixers in scoring eight consecutive seasons. A player in franchise history has the longest streak. For more than eight. More than eight consecutive seasons. Wow. I, I think he was I think he was honored at halftime. Oh, they be splitting the free throws. Well, this is retro night, you know, Harvard, Harvard Classic. Classic. So we go back to Syracuse Nats days also. That's the beginnings of the franchise. Richardson with the steal. Foot race with Iguodala. He'll finger roll it up and in. He could have called. Clear path foul. I'm glad they let it go. Now Philly on the counterattack. You give that shot. You give him that shot. Long rebound. Iguodala is very quick. 
Remember and Iverson working on the same side. Iverson missing there. Murphy with a rebound. He can get that outlet pass going. Weber fouled Fisher. You know, I, I love Chris Weber. I like what he's done. But that was a lazy foul. That was a foul to say, you know what? I think I'd like to walk back down to the court rather than run. So here are the Warriors pushing it back up to eight points, equaling their largest of the night. Murphy will draw the foul as Weber pushed him. Weber just picked up his fourth foul. So the Warriors trying to add to this advantage. You think of the outstanding road effort in Memphis. A nice road win in Minnesota, winning at D.C. And then really one bad stretch in the fourth quarter in New York. Warriors led by one with seven minutes left in that game. And then 93-92. Then a 21-1 to one run by the Knicks. That really is the only bad stretch of ball they've played on this road trip. I agree. And this is the fifth game. So now it's interesting. Weber gives up that foul in the backcourt on Fisher. Now picks up his fourth. That changes things. So kind of a wasted foul. Fisher trying to stay with Iverson. Dropping it back to D'Alembert. Long jump hook. Three Warriors on the defensive glass. And Dunleavy will push it himself. I don't think they want the same thing to transpire as it did in New York the other night. Murphy was challenged on that shot by Weber. Well, Troy is not having a good shooting night. This, this is a team with confidence. I think they, they've got to get that killer instinct. I think they understand that against this club tonight. And Iverson's always there to bail you out for the Sixers. So Iverson now with 19. He may not like to practice, but I'll tell you what, he lays it out every second he's on the floor when it's game night. Richardson three. Yes, sir. And Jason now in double figures. I'm telling you, he has become a very good shooter. Well, Not the, just a streak shooter, but a good shooter. Well, the difference in prolific scores eventually becomes the foul line. Iverson over 11, 10 attempts per game. Jason, four free throws a game. Foyle blocking Iverson. Look at him stand around. Richardson taking it. Adonal running the floor, laying it up and in. That was a very acrobatic finish. The Warriors on an 11-2 burst. The first 345 here in the third and pushing it to a double figure lead for the first time tonight. Never playing with Corver. We've got to watch him at the arc. Richardson was there late. I think last year he was pretty good for three point range, but he was a catch and shoot player. Now that is off the move. It's a catch and shoot, but he was moving on the play. Yeah, very quick release. Yes. And, and squared up nicely. Jason down the lane. Look at that move to finger roll it in. The low dribble kept him out of trouble. The low dribble to the floor. Beautiful sideways motion. Richardson had eight in the first half. He's got seven here in the third. A foul off the ball on Dunleavy. Jason, little pick and roll. He's the one that makes it though. Crossover dribble, then picked it up in that extension. The fewer dribbles you take on your way to the basket, the more efficient you're going to be. Iverson got around everybody to put it up and in. Well, you've got to overcommit. If you're the big man and you think you haven't cut off, he's going to the right. You've got to step another half step in order to be safe. Because he just scoots right by you. Speed, quickness, and also he's thin. So clock at seven, and Richardson was out of bounds. See, these are the mistakes I, I talked about at halftime. I think the team that makes the fewer mistakes can run away with this. Iverson again. Fisher came up with the ball and was called for the foul. Well, he did strip him, I'll tell you that. Our Toyota trivia answer. Alan Iverson has led the Sixers in scoring eight consecutive seasons. The player with the longest streak is Dolph Shays. 12 consecutive seasons. Got to show a little more of that. Give him a little time on a free throw. He deserves it. Iguodala was out of bounds on the baseline, so the Sixers turn it right over. Well, Philly out of that timeout is trying to turn up their defense, turn up their energy level. See if the Warriors can match that and play with this lead. Murphy, big shot from the baseline. Troy been struggling. He's got 11 now. 
They go with five rebounds. Four Warriors in double figures. The ball deflected away. Richardson's got it. Jason will rip it down with a right hand. Iguodala was lurking. Otherwise, that could have been a 360. 13 point lead. The biggest of the night. This is where you get tougher and tougher. The good teams will. Alley oop. Ricocheting around Foyle comes up with it. He wants to shoot it. This Drops it to off. O'Donnell. Well defended by Dallin Bear. I still like the play. There's Iverson at 100 miles an hour. Gadala with a big step. Barely ticking Iron Murphy with the rebound. Richardson didn't want the three. And Dunleavy traveled. Well, a couple unforced errors keeping the Warriors from playing nearly a perfect quarter thus far. They've taken the three-point halftime lead and padded it by ten more. Well, they've only allowed Philadelphia five points thus far in this quarter. Oh, pardon me. Make it seven. Weber from the line. He throws it away. So the Warrior defense has been outstanding for six and a half minutes here. Mark Jackson will check into the game for the Sixers. Dallin Bear will sit down. Dallin Bear 6.7 rebounds, but Jackson's a good perimeter shooter, and trying to give Iverson options to throw it to the way the Warriors have defended the paint. Well, now they have no shot blockers in there. Well, they're 30th in the league. They're the worst shot blocking team in the NBA. Well, yeah, Dallin Bear, one and a half a game. Now they don't have that. Aaron McKee with Iverson, Corver, Mark Jackson, and Weber. Corver. Barely in his hands, missing the three there. Richardson in transition. So the teams exchange missed threes. Yeah, I think that was a little quick there for him. I think they can drive the hoop. This guy will. And Iverson, an offensive foul. Derek Fisher had a big smile on his face there. Well, Fisher anticipated he got there. Was there enough contact for the offensive foul? That's what Allen Iverson is concerned about. And I think there was. I think Allen well, Iverson's had the whistle blow 15 times and it's gone his way about 13. So the thing is, <laughs> he did back it out. See, a lot of times they'll just let that go because he did not continue on trying to score. So you could give him the benefit of the doubt. Murphy on the post up in the dunk and a good feed from Fisher. Yeah, they're ruthless in Philadelphia. They're booing the home team here. They boot Santa Claus for the <laughs> Phillies. And Jim Barnett gets so excited when we go back in time. So let's talk more about Dolph Shays. Well, number four, I, I just loved him. Of course, they played on Saturday afternoons on national television back in the 50s. And 12 consecutive seasons. One year average, 24.9. Syracuse Nats, Dolph Shays. Of course, his son Larry Danny. Larry Costello. His son Danny later played in the league as well. Danny played for 18 years. Couldn't score like his dad. And that's Earl Lloyd, the first African-American to play in the NBA and a history maker in his own right. The Dolph Shays with Larry Costello, Johnny Kerr. They were honored here at halftime. Jason Richardson has been so big for the Warriors since he's come back from that ankle injury. He, I don't know there's an off guard in the league that's played any better. And he wants to keep getting better. Our first and look at, at Willie Green, who hurt the Warriors here in Philly a couple years ago. Rodney Rogers dropped it, picked it back up. Green missing the shot of Baron Davis with the rebound. It's Baron Davis Richardson, Murphy Beedrich, and Murphy running the floor, had it blocked from behind with no foul. Good defense by Philly. That was a heck of a pass, and it was a heck of a block. They double team with Fisher and Davis on Iverson. Iverson to Jackson. Oh, Iverson three. Yeah, that'll get you back. Iverson's got 24. So Willie Green and Iverson McKee, Jackson and Rogers. This is the Sixers version of small ball. The Warriors two point guards with Fisher and Baron Davis. I, I don't think that's a shot that you need right now. I really think you need to work the ball. And, and you know what, Derek Fisher raised his hand back to the bench. He knows it. 
It's just because you didn't work the shot clock. Other guys didn't touch it. But it is Derek's first miss of the night. He's three yeah. of four. Yeah. No, listen, I think he's. I think he's been playing better basketball than he's ever played even in L.A. Forget the three championship rings. He's done more here. Hook pass to Rogers. Murphy closed out on him. Mark Jackson down the lane, flipping it up and in. The Phillies come to life a little bit. Five quick. Now, Baron Davis has to not try to do too much here. Not try to do too much and create turnovers. That's what Philadelphia's looking for. Cycling around. Close out by Iverson. Tough shot by Fisher. He hit it anyway. Double clutcher. A little hanging double clutcher. Five Warriors in double figures. Trying to offset Iverson's 24, AI missing the three. Philadelphia, what I noticed with this group, they're getting back better on defense. Weber was hurting in that department. Richardson spinning. Baron Davis sets his feet for a three, it's way offline. And Iverson pushing the other way. Warriors can't just start settling for threes here. Yeah, and Baron Davis is getting back in shape so he can drive. This guy can shoot him. And Rodgers missing, Biedrich with a rebound. The length of Andres Biedrich is so noticeable. Well, and also the aggressiveness he possesses. I like him on the floor. I have no problems with him out there, no qualms whatsoever. Third straight game on the road, and that one deflected away. And the Warriors are lucky it wasn't a layup. Okay, you know, that's the third turnover for Barron. This is a game where you cannot get complacent, and you have to keep putting the hammer down. Warriors have turned it over 12 times, but they forced 19 sixer turnovers. Iverson missing. Biedrich another rebound. Well, Biedrich has yet to play 40 minutes in his entire NBA career, Bob. He'll get that tonight. But he's impressing me. Murphy for the baseline, following his shot and then committing the foul. I, I like I like the way he follows the shot. I think in the first half he could have followed it and gotten a rebound. This time he just runs into Aaron McKee. No free throws coming. That's four team fouls each way. But the Warriors would do well, Jim, if they can finish off this final minute 53 and be up double figures. Double digits. That's sort of the goal here. As Fisher will sit down. And, and with a 12 point lead, you might even think, I think you need to get greedy also and say, all right, let's try to finish this and have a 15 point lead. Again, why not? Mark Jackson on the rookie B drinks. Healing. Andres blocked the shot and an offensive foul because Jackson had to ward him off. Great interior defense. Beatrice does not back down from anyone, and they don't know who this guy is. They don't know who he is. They don't know what he possesses. Jackson shoving off on him, and Beatrice still blocks the shot. He stands his ground. That's how long he is. That's how tough he is, too. Very important minute 30 here, winding down the third quarter. They double team Baron Davis. Murphy's the escape player. Skip past Petrus. Clock at five. Michael deep two. Rimming out. Murphy the offensive rebound and he puts it in. Just stuck his nose in there, didn't he? And those long arms come reaching out. Good help from Petrus. Rodney Rogers again. Well, they've come alive here, the three-pointers in the second half. Philadelphia now 5 of 16 from beyond the arc. Warriors 7 of 22. Well, they made three in this quarter. I saw, I saw. From Richardson on McKee, shot clock at 9. It's been a while since he touched the ball. Thus the shot. Jason, that one a little flat. you got to stop Iverson here. Pushing ahead, and Baron Davis with a steal. 360 into the front court. Try two for one. Trying to get it to Petrus, another turnover. And it's going to result in an Iverson layup. Now we talked about being up double figures. The Warriors, a couple self inflicted wounds here in the last couple minutes of the third. Play for one. And that's, that's, I'm going to say it again. That's why Barron's got to be careful to not try to do too much. That's four turnovers in about 14 minutes. Away. 2.5 and a quarter, two to shoot. 
So for the Warriors, worst case, it should be a nine-point lead. I'd love to have someone catch and shoot here. And Mike Montgomery sensing the same thing. We'll use a timeout. He'll use his 20-second timeout right here. And try to get an out-of-bounds. But the Warriors will take it up three at the half. They push the lead to nine on the road, heading into the fourth quarter. Wachovia Center in Philly. Bob Fitzgerald, Jim Barnett with you. And a pretty good third quarter for the Warriors, defensively and offensively. And only that six or 10 4 run in the final couple minutes kind of put a damper on it. They had seven fast break points in the first eight minutes of that quarter. Then they made some changes at the defense, got smaller. That took that away, but 10 turnovers by Iverson. Oh. Go with his 26 points. Dunleavy three to begin the fourth. Petra's going to take a turn on Iverson. Wheeling through blue jerseys, putting it up and out. Rebound. Murphy snatches it. Murphy and Baron Davis, Petrus Foyle and Dunleavy, Willie Green, Rogers, Mark Jackson, McKee, and Iverson. The Warriors continue to play that stifling defense. They held them 7 of 21 in that quarter. Baron Davis is fouled. See, I like that play by Baron there because in the fourth quarter on the road, getting into the bonus yeah. becomes key. And again, they don't have a shot blocker in there, so attack the basket. Forget the threes now. That's the easy way out. Davis again sets up Murphy. Iverson comes flying at him and commits the second team foul. He caught Murphy in the chops. I like that. I think Murphy knew exactly what was going to transpire. So two fouls on Philly in the first 47 seconds of the fourth quarter. Murphy on Rodgers. Good no call as he lays it up and in. I commend Ed Rush there. Let's see more of that. There was a collision. There certainly was contact. But who had the angle? I think Murphy's got a bloody nose, possibly. Let's check that. Willie Green. I mean, that was from the Iverson hit, by the way, not from, not from the last drive. That pass, right idea for Baron Petrus didn't secure it. Here's Iverson, always putting pressure on the defense. Willie Green, look what I found to Mark Jackson, and Murphy's just not going to give up the layup. That was nearly a steal, and now it becomes free throws for Philly. I still don't think you just take the foul right there. I think Murphy's a little tired. You know, try to block the shot, and then if you don't get it, then you foul, but just don't give him the foul. And here's the drive a minute ago. And I'll tell you what, usually you see a whistle on that. And I like to let the players decide the game. Even Iverson, when he's driving in there, banging into Petrus in that first half. Let's just see what happens. He's getting rid of the ball. Now the nice thing on that replay is that it wasn't a block. It wasn't a charge. Rogers was trying to flop and just let the basketball play happen. And Murphy is bleeding from the nose. You join the season ticket priority list and win an autographed Baron Davis jersey or a trip to Hawaii for the Warrior training camp. Well, this is going to be funny. Call 888-GSW-HOOP, option one, and their operator standing by right now. You can log on to warriors.com for more info on the prior priority list as you get your tickets before the general public. And I, I was talking about the promo not being funny, Bob, but Eric Lewis blew the whistle right when Mark Jackson was shooting the free throw, so he missed it. He's going to get another free throw because he felt like it was interrupted there by the official, and Murphy stepped off the floor to fix that bloody nose. Jackson, 80% shooter. Yeah, out of Temple, local guy here, originally drafted by the Warriors. That's Murphy sitting down a few minutes ago, maybe going back, put a little cotton inside that nose. Dunleavy swooping in and laying it in, and Mike got hit in a place you can't grab on television as he runs back. Well, he got hit in the same place that North Carolina State player got hit by oh. Iverson. Will get the call as Dunleavy gave ground there. And Mike's not happy and not feeling very good. Chris Paul, right? Wake Forest. Chris Paul was yeah. suspended for hitting somebody in the groin on purpose, which was inexplicable. This one was just something that happened in the natural part of the game.
Well, Dunley been moving on the play. That's why they call the block. These are Iverson's first free throws of the second half. And that came in the fourth quarter, yeah. which is good. They shut that down. Now, here's the interesting thing. Chris Weber is getting booed. As he checks in. As he checks in. Weber, three of nine Look with eight the, points. The yellow into the line there. Ten turnovers. Averages 4.2 a game. Back to nine. Baron Davis and Foyle, Dunleavy, Richardson, and Petrus. Billy Green with Jackson, McKee, Iverson, Weber. Then Levy catch and shoot. It was not getting inside. And Iverson couldn't collect the ball, went out of bounds. It'd be Warrior ball, and that's a freebie. Looked like they played a little zone back there, but the Warriors have got to be able to penetrate that zone. Rodney Rogers will check back in. And let's see if the Warriors can run with Weber on the floor again, because he's had difficult time getting back. Well, they're putting Weber on foil and Rodney Rogers on Dunleavy. Richardson on the inbounds, banking that off from 10 feet. Had a good look. With Iverson, look how fast he is to Weber, missing the layup, and Dunleavy with the rebound. And Weber's getting booed loudly now. Yeah, I'll tell you something. He's a very sensitive young man. Very sensitive. Davis in traffic, Dunleavy time to collect himself. Yes, sir. Big shot. Mike Dunleavy was 17, Murphy was 17, Richardson was 17. That's what I'd like to see Barron do right now. Penetrate, draw, dish. Iverson blocked by Baron Davis. Take care of the ball here. Richardson to Petrus, swooping to the rim. Whoa! And Petrus is spilled, he's all right, but. It was a dangerous play as Michael went down head first. Well, again, I'll say Rodney Rogers didn't even attempt to make a play of the ball. And not, not that I'm worried about a guy getting hurt. Great block inside there as the fadeaway. But don't you have an angle to maybe get the right-hander to go up, shoot the ball with his hand, and then knock it away, and then foul him? They just go ahead and give a foul. To me, it's, the again, the easy way out. So Michael with 11 points in 15 minutes off the bench. He nets them both, and that's big and, contribution. You, know, you you spot it right away, Jim, and now I'm watching for it as well. Baron Davis and Petrus. Yeah. There, there really is something kind of clicking there between the two. Yeah, he, he's forcing him to play at a high level. Willie Green defended well by Foyle. That's a nice take by Willie Green. He could be a prolific scorer. And a good handoff from Weber. A simple basic thing you learn in the sixth grade. Green out of Detroit Mercy was the 41st pick in 03 by Seattle. Kind of a super sub score. And Levy was crushed by Rodgers. And that'll be three free throws. And you know you're going to get crushed when you get him up in the air. Rodney Rodgers is laying the lumber tonight. I know the Eagles lost the Super Bowl, but it is the NFL free agent signing period. By a dozen, led by three at the half. They've pushed it. But, Jim, we can't come to Philly and not talk about Dr. J. You know, when you think of him in the ABA with the Nets, but his number hanging in the rafters of the Wachovia Center and somewhere you can hear Dave Zinkos. Reverse layup, here it is. It's 89-84, Sixers, and they get inside. But Unbelievable. Dave, Watch this. Dave Zinkoff, their longtime PA announcer, one of the most famous voices yes. in NBA history, you know, the doctor, Julius, Irving. I mean, it was just just an octave lower doing that. Doing and that. there's Steve Mix. There's Steve Mix, who was a great teammate, great shooter from the baseline. And Dave Zinkoff, the microphone, the PA mic is. Yep, they retired, retired. his mic. He was, he was something special. But so was Dr. J. <laughs> Dunleavy will get three free throws here. And Mike has been bounced around this quarter on offense and defense. Missing the second. The old three to make two. Been a couple of those tonight. The one with Mark Jackson when he got the extra because mm -hmm. the blow whistle. The whistle. <laughs> Troy Murphy is back on the Warrior bench. He had a bloody nose. It was a ten and two, and also has some loose teeth. Ooh, it's a bloody nose, and that doesn't concern you. The loose teeth, I don't like. And Mike, two out of three, so. Dunleavy leading the way with 19. 
Richardson 17, Murphy 17, Fisher 11, and Petrus 12. Excellent balance scoring for the Warriors. Yes. Weber again. Oh, he, he just can't find a hoop here. Well, he's 3 of 11, and every miss brings more booze raining down from the Wachovia Center. And Davis and Billy Green. Barron a 3. And he's just trying to put the Sixers away right now. Warriors push it to 17. And they're almost put away. Rodney Rogers, a three in response. Now they talked about the Weber acquisition at the trading deadline, but getting Rodney Rogers for essentially nothing as they traded Glenn Robinson for Rogers and then Jamal Mashburn, whose contract is being picked up 80% of it by insurance anyway. Rodney Rogers can help you. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Well, it was interesting. I thought about that. I'll say it after Richardson hits this three. Oh, it's in and out. I don't want to say this, and I almost said this earlier. Rodney Rogers might help him more than Weber because he can be more of a role player. What do you think about that? No, and they've got two more years after this for Weber's contract. And enormous money. 20 million a year. And Rodney Rogers, whether it was with New Jersey, whether it was in Boston, whether it was in Phoenix. Iverson three doesn't go. Dunn Levy with the rebound. Well, you're, you're lying, Jim. They made Iverson a volume shooter. He's 8 of 22. Yep. Wouldn't be near this close if he hadn't gotten to the line that much. But just every time Iverson shooting jumpers, instead of dicing up your defense by dribbling into the lane. Smart by Mike Dunn over there. Running start at Rodgers. Uh, I'll tell you what he did. I'll tell you in a minute. Uh, clock at 4. Aaron Davis, little running hook. The loose ball. Look how fast Iverson is. Willie really Green <laughs> sent away by Richardson. And he hurt his ankle on the way down. His right one. He's going to try to gut through it. And it probably came down on Mike Dunleavy's foot. Jason. That's the good one, by the way. Yeah, he the hurt left, he the left, the left the ankle. And we'll get a chance to see it at the bottom of your screen when he comes down. Probably came down on Willie Green's foot. Green inside, just had the last one rejected, and this time he travels. Swarming defense. Now let's watch Richardson come up. And whose foot is he going to come down on? Nope, it was Mike Dunleavy's. And I, as again, I'm surprised that doesn't happen more often. Well, the size of these guys' feet, size of the players, the amount of people that get aerial. A minute ago, Mike Dunleavy did a smart thing. It, uh, this is what I'm going to say. If he could throw the ball, Iverson had an intercept. He didn't do it. See, those are, those are little things that a lot of players could get in trouble doing. Richardson tried to split the defenders. Iverson behind his back. But they made him go away from the hoop. Missed the jumper. There's Weber. Nothing's going down for him. I feel for the young man. Well, I'd say young. He's been in the league 12 years. I'd tell you what, though. There's a lot of Warrior fans that don't mind Chris Webber being playing on one leg and being tortured. Because, Why is that? Because he's tortured the Warriors over oh, the years. Yeah, he's, he's had some of his best games as a Warrior opponent. That leave you missing. Fallen in by Petrus. There's your capper. That's a 16-point lead with six minutes to go. Well, the boos are increasing in volume as Jim O'Brien takes time again. What a wonderful game by Michael Petrus off the bench. 557 remaining and the Warriors could they get win number three on this trip. Southwest Airlines is not just for short flights anymore. We're taking low fares farther with more long-distance flights out of Oakland. You are now free to move about the country. The Pac-10 Tournament. That's what we like! Where the madness begins. What a play! The conference's elite square off as they set out on their quest for a title. Oh, is that ever pretty? Three days in March. Can you believe that? One court. Back 10 Men's Tournament, Thursday and Friday on FSN. 
the best damn sports show, period. <laughs> Television's greatest late night sports show has raised the bar again. Join Tom Arnold and John Sally as they cut loose with the biggest stars in sports and entertainment. It's late night television reinvented. I don't know if you're going to go for this. Oh, yes. Oh, my God. The best damn sports show, period, tonight on FSN. Warriors, Pistons, Wednesday at 4.30 on FSN Bay Area. This copyrighted telecast of the National Basketball Association may not be retransmitted, reproduced, rebroadcast, or otherwise distributed or used in any form without the express written consent of the NBA. Well, the Warriors back to back as they head to Motown to deal with the defending champions, Chauncey Billups, Ben Wallace, and friends. That'll be at 4.30. Tomorrow, we'll have it for you on FSN Bay Area, your exclusive home for Warrior basketball all year long. Iverson. Back to the rim with live action. He's got 30, so right at his average. And this is Philly's last stand right now. Yes, and the Warriors have to score a few more times and use some time in the process if you can. And take care of the ball. Please get your shots up. Aaron Davis, cycle it to Richardson. Shot clock at seven. Foyle, ricochet. Aaron Davis, three. Off back iron. So Baron Davis with Dunleavy, Foyle, Peterson, Richardson, Weber, Iverson with Willie Green, Iguodala back in and Corbett. There's a ton of three-point shooting on the floor for Philly. Iverson had it knocked away. Richardson comes up with it, and Iguodala fouls him and took the contact. Warriors have only committed two fouls, and now Philly's over the limit. Talked about getting into the bonus, particularly on the road in the fourth quarter. And Iverson, that was just his 11th turnover. That equals a Warrior franchise opponent record wow. at 11. A 12th one would be the new opponent franchise record. And that's, you get Iverson to shoot 9 of 24 and make him turn it over 12 times. You've done your job defensively. And you think Sunday with the Knicks shooting 62% from the field, how about holding Philly to 39% shooting? Yeah, and Philly, last night, their defense was so porous in Miami. I think Miami shot 62%, by the way. Michael Petras, 14 points in 19 minutes as he sits down. Derek Fisher back in. And Mikhail's done a nice job here recently. We're talking three double-figure points games for Petras. One at home and then two on the road. And other than the shoulder injury, he, he'd really been rolling. They had 12 in Detroit at home, and then that opening game in Memphis, 17. Well, there's Iverson's 12th turnover. Don Levy, little push shot, he banks it in. So no one in the history of the Warrior franchise, from their Philadelphia era all the way to wow. 2005, you're, you're talking 46 to 2005, nobody has committed 12 turnovers against them so until Alan tonight. Iverson, leading scorer in the league, does that. And he's their superstar. And then Chris Weber, their other superstar, just can't buy a basket. Iverson hitting the three. He could have had four-point play opportunity there. I understand we're having some transmission problems, so bear with us as we try to fix that at FSN Bay Area. Try to get a stick shift or an automatic. 96-81, Warriors on top with 4.14 left. You take everything so literally, partner. I love that. <laughs> Shot clock at four, and it didn't matter. Baron Davis. He hit the big three, hits the jumper there. He's got nine, and the Warrior lead is 17 with four minutes left. Al Korver leaning in from 20. Willie Green with a rebound. Dunleavy, easiest rebound of the night. What a night for Dunleavy. 21 points, seven rebounds, three assists, three steals. And he'll run the team here with Fisher and Baron Davis playing off the ball. And he's gone to the free throw line nine times, which I, I really love. And that just points out to his toughness and ability to take it inside and willingness to do so another Jay three. Jason Richardson with a knockout blow three. As he's got 22, the Warriors push it to 20. Jason's four of nine from beyond the arc. And Iverson throwing the ball at the official as we have a timeout. 325 left and the Warriors up 20 in Philly. 
NBA TV is your channel for everything basketball. Oh, baby. All access. Team's ready. We're loose. I got back. I got back. All original. He plays hard every night. He does play hard. All exclusive. That's been the major strength of this team, Coach. We're the world champ. All games. All highlights. Watch NBA TV all day, all night. Are you kidding me? All basketball. Hello. Yeah, I'd like to return these checks. You put the bank's address on them instead of mine. Okay, that's a new printing fee, a transaction fee, and of course a conversation fee. Conversation fee? We'll have to charge you for this little chat we're having. Three pronouns, seven verbs. What? Oh, <laughs> emotional outburst fee. Well, those can be steep. You'll have to write us a check. Fed up with fees? Try Washington Mutual. Our free checking has no teller fees, no fine print, no surprises. There you go. I'll have to charge you for that. Washington Mutual. Well, the Warriors' biggest lead of the night comes at a good time, up 20 with 3.25 left in the fourth. Our Exxon game-changing play of the night after Dunleavy missed. Petra swooping in for two of his 14 on the follow shot. That is your Exxon game-changer as the Warriors change things up in the second half, allowing 17 points in the third and 14 points here in the fourth, crashing the offensive glass, forcing 24 Philly turnovers, and 26 points off turnovers. 11 for 37 shooting in the second half. They've produced on Philly. Kevin Ollie has checked in. But the thing is, also, this team, remember earlier in the season, Warriors couldn't score. And now they seem to score easily. Well, really, since February 1st, the Warriors have been 103 points a game yeah. on average. Well, one of the best in the league. Since they've acquired Baron Davis, this team's going to be three and three, and three and two on the road as Josh Davis knocked that out of bounds. That pass, I didn't think had any chance at all of finding a blue jersey. There was a guy wide open in the corner, but I, I will say this right now, it's a lot. Baron Davis is a high-risk player. Well, Richardson had to beat the shot clock buzzer. Ricochet's out of bounds. It'll be Philly ball. Mike Montgomery, in a rare road situation, on a back-to-back, -back, could rest some of his starters here. Leading by 20 with 2.35 left. Something to think about. Just saying, coach hasn't had that luxury. As Iguodala hits a long two. And he's thinking just like I'm thinking, as here comes Beedrich and Nicholas Skittishvili and friends are going to come to the scorer's table, along with Rodney White and Calvin Chaney. What a tremendous road performance by the Warriors on both ends of the court. Baron Davis having that stolen by Kyle Korver. Iguodala trying to drop it inside, and Derek Fisher will commit the foul. So the Warriors will make a shift change here. This is where the Flyers actually play hockey when they are playing hockey. Sub in everybody, and great night for Richardson with 22, Dunleavy with 21, Murphy at 17, Fisher at 11. Now Kyle Korver, gonna play the NBA look-alike game. Pretty well, close. Very close, as a matter of fact. With Ashton Kutcher, the host of Punk on MTV. Take away that little headband that he has. Rodney White losing it out of bounds. It's a warrior ball. Even more so without the headband, don't you think? I wonder if Kyle Korver went and asked Demi Moore out if she'd just say yes. <laughs> well, I mean, I'll tell you something. Because he would be her type, right? He looks just like the guy she's dating. Skittish Philly inside, still hasn't gotten a warrior bucket. I'll tell you something. That used to happen when you were twins, and there were a couple of great twins in this league, and Corver misses a three there. Tom and Dick Van Arsdale, and they used to do that in college. I mean, they are identical twins, and you cannot tell them apart to this day. And 
You know, they would once in a while fool somebody and show up at the sorority and it'd be I, the other guy. I thought you were going to say Tom and Dick asked Demi Moore out. Oh, no. Well, it's extensive garbage time here, and the Warriors will take it. Rodney White missing. Final minute here in Philadelphia with the Warriors going to win this one going away. Led by one at the end of one, led by three at halftime. Pushed it to nine at the end of three and just once again outplayed a team in the fourth quarter. Iguodala. I'll tell you what, I know the uh, uh, Andre Iguodala, when you look at the, the draft day trade. Yes. You know, Luau Dang and Iguodala probably would have been players the Phoenix Suns were interested in, and they yes. ended up trading the pick. They saw Iguodala last till nine, and they're Skittish Phillies first Warrior bucket, and it's a three. And Not I think, surprising, by the way, to have the three, is it? I think the Phoenix Suns said, if we had known Iguodala was going to be there at nine, we never would have made that trade. D'Alembert missing. Yeah, he's a kind of Phoenix Sun player, isn't he? Sean Marion type, has to improve the outside shot. You watch him drive there, setting up Corver, another three. And Biedrins with the rebound. Andres Biedrins, third consecutive game. This time he played 12 minutes tonight. Season high. Had a block. This is a big win. This is a big win, isn't it, in Philly? Well, the Warriors, you look at the Eastern Conference. They come to Washington, take care of the Wizards. They come to Philadelphia, take care of the Sixers. And on the road now, three and two on this eight game road trip. And you think of the teams that have gone on eight gamers, only two other ones, the Sixers did that. And the Clippers went 0 and eight on their eight game trip. No team in the league is going to play eight games in 12 days, except the Warriors. And they're three and two on this trip, heading to Detroit on the back end of a back to back on a night where they shoot 45%. They hold Philly to 38% shooting. The Warriors put five players in double figures and get a great game from Mike Dunleavy with 21 points, seven rebounds, and three assists. Most importantly for Mike, six of nine from the foul line as he was aggressive throughout. But Michael Petrus, now that the Warriors have acquired Baron Davis, Jim Barnett, I think Petrus is playing his best basketball with Baron Davis on the team. Yeah, I have to agree, and he's playing very smoothly in scoring. Mikel, another win on the road. That makes three wins on this road trip already. You have to feel very satisfied. I think everybody is satisfied. We know we played very well. We did a great job. I think we, we cheered the ball pretty well, and we got everybody involved, and it's good for the Warriors' future. Tell us about your game, because it is developing. You're able to score. Tonight, you get 14 points in only 18 minutes, and you hit clutch threes when the shot clock is winding down. How are you able to do that? Oh, you know, I really put myself to, to, to win every basketball game right now. I feel better with Byron Davis on the floor, and I just have to pick it up and try to get a, a win in Detroit tomorrow, and we're going to be fine. I was going to bring up Baron Davis because he has a definite influence on your game, and he's a player that's not quiet on the floor. Everybody else seems to be quiet, reluctant to talk, but he will speak his mind. He's a two-time All-Star, so he got us a little better, and uh, that's a great trade. So I feel better. Everybody will say focus. He's the leader, and we got Jerry's the scorer, and I think I say he's, he's, he's good for the Warriors' future right now. You know, it looks like to me, Mikel, that your decision making is getting better. The experience is helping you find your way in the NBA. Tell us about when you're playing now as you were playing last year and what the comfort zone that you've developed. I think the, my energy from the bench is very important for this team. So me, I try to stay really focused and I'm the Warriors future. So I have to improve myself and get better and get better. And in a, in a couple of years, we're going to be great and we're going to be a, a playoff team. What is the difference here? This team is expecting to win now. You can see the confidence. And is it because of Baron Davis and how he's infused that into this entire basketball team? I think everybody, they came out of the locker and everybody just tried to, to come out and stay focused and try to, to win basketball game. Byron is really helping us. And I think as everybody in Oakland right now is very happy and you just have to, to pick it up and think about tomorrow and how, how will we play great right now. Last question, you've got to be very excited about the core of this group. You talk about being the future, along with Mike Dunleavy, Troy Murphy, and of course, Baron Davis still only 25, 26 years of age, and Jason Richardson. Playing with guys like that, the, with the ability to score, has to make it easier for you. 
Yeah, yeah. Zem Zemiki is here for me, and I say we we the Warriors' future, so we got to pick it up right now and and hope be great uh, in the future. And uh, I just have to to stay focused. Everybody stay focused, and everybody enjoy the game. I enjoy the game myself, and I'm happy. Mikhail, congratulations. Terrific effort again tonight. You're playing excellent basketball, putting the ball in there, and congratulations on that win. And Bob, I'll tell you right now, I love to have him on the floor. He scores a lot of points in just a few minutes. Oh, no, you're right, Jimmy. When you think about you. Baron Davis at 25 and Richardson at 24, Murphy at 24, Dunleavy at 24, and Petrus at 23, there is a young core for the Warriors. Our Corona, what's on tap? No time to think about this one. They'll deal with Detroit tomorrow. We'll have it for you on FSN Bay Area, the radio only in Indiana, and they wrap up this road trip. Nearly 8,000 air miles dealing with Atlanta on Saturday. The Warriors 3-2 three and two on the trip, 3-3 three and three since they acquired Baron Davis, and they blow out the Sixers tonight, outscoring Philly 51-35 in the second half and putting five players in double figures. For Jim Barnett, this is Bob Fitzgerald saying so long from the Wachovia Center in Philly. We'll talk to you from Detroit tomorrow. Ashton Kutcher, Kyle Korver didn't matter for the Warriors tonight.